stacks and stacks and stacks of goodies. Hey there, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. Stacks of goodies, hopefully for you. I am emptying my studio. I've looked around this room a thousand times thinking, I have enough here for 10 people to craft for a thousand years apiece. And it's, it's too much, too much, too much. So I spent the last several weekends carefully curating goodie packs for you. <laughs> And I want to show them to you today. We'll start here on the top. I have three different kinds. Each serves a specific purpose. The first one is a junk journal starter kit. For those of you who are brand new to it and don't have any of the goodies, I have, I've got you covered. I'm putting them all in these U.S. Postal Service flat rate envelopes, meaning no matter how much is in here or how much it weighs, it's about $11 to ship it and I'm gonna cram as much or I have crammed as much in these bags as I can fit for each of the different kinds of packages blank slate think just starting out what is it that you need well let's give this a gander shall we in no particular order except for size the smallest stuff is on top the idea is every single piece, including the padded envelope, can be used in junk journaling. This would make a great uh, tactile, soft journal cover. Cover this in fabric or paint or whatever and make a junk journal cover out of this. Now, you may have to cut it down a little bit. You don't have to. Uh, you can leave the openings so you have pockets. So every single item. Every single item in this can be used for junk journaling, including these envelopes. Now, a lot of people get these. A lot of people have gone paperless and don't get these anymore. I have billions. And the, each envelope is filled with stuff. This one has cards and tags and labels, and some of them are vintage. Some vintage things are here and here and there scattered because I don't have a lot of vintage stuff. Uh, but what I do have, I'm sharing. So there's that. Cards of various sizes. These make good postcards, journal cards, pieces for collage, various cards for altered playing cards, fun stuff to stick in journals. A lot of fun things can be done with old tags by just simply gluing stuff on them and adding a little bit of paint and mark making. Charms because, you know, book bling. Metal that I colored myself with alcohol sprays. In this envelope, there's bits of lace, bits of seam binding, stuff for mark making. Bubble wrap makes fantastic marks on uh, with, with paint, on painty papers, on plain copy paper, uh, stencils of some sort, mark making things, bubble wrap of different sizes and some plastic canvas i think this was called it used to put needle needlepoint yarn through it but it makes great mark making you can spray stuff through it fun sprays made with food coloring spray that through it dab paint through it dip it in paint and stamp with it so there's a lot of things you can do with those some bits of material this makes good tabs i've stamped just the one little stamp so you can watercolor on it you could spray it with fun spray you can use your sharpie markers on it you can use any kind of markers you have on it you can dye it with natural dyes avocado dyes or onion skin dyes all kinds of things on material and these make great tag toppers and page tabs and page edging and if you tear it into strips you can make a nice little wrap for your journal closure bigger envelopes these you can fold in half and use as pages and then you have pockets and you can put pretty things behind the window you can decorate these all up there's loads of videos on how to use these envelopes uh, vintage seam binding all the colors will be different corrugated cardboard 
this has all kinds of uses. You can make clusters with it. You can take the top layer off and use it for mark making. Some fussy cutting items, just miscellaneous images, some packaging. Lots of use, not only for the board in the back, but the shiny on the front. All kinds of fun stuff you can do with that. And then loads and loads of different kinds of paper. Some things that I have made, like these pockets, you can use them as is. You can decorate them. You can take them apart and, and figure out how they're made. There's a hundred videos on how to use old book pages. And this, if you glue down, you have a pocket behind, a pocket here, 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 and here to tuck things in. These are just page corners that I colored up the edging. You can use them as, you glue them down on two sides and use them as tucks thusly in your page. So it's some things that I have made that I have loads of and will never ever use that many. Some started altered playing cards, just coffee dyed and maps stuck to them. Various papers. This is from the newspaper when they when they're putting new ink on the press or doing maintenance on the presses they run these these rolls uh, in order to get the ink flowing properly etc so some of them have ghost prints on it which are kind of cool some ads but they're they're barely there so you can work around them you can use this as painty paper this is very soft newsprint but lots of blank as well as the, uh, some have print. More envelopes, napkins, all kinds of different napkins. It's one of my favorites, Domestic Bliss. Only a bottle of Cabernet away. Paper bags, these make wonderful little journals all themselves. Trifold journal and you put a signature there and a signature there and you've got a pocket and some top wonderful things you could tear it up and use it in collages craft paper just use it as a cut it all apart and use it as pages for a small journal deli paper various strips this could be faux washi this could be woven into a cluster this could be page edging you can mark make on these vintage graph paper wallpaper these are fun to play with they make great journal covers mini journals cut it there fold it in half cut it here fold it in half make an accordion something or other out of it wallpaper is always fun to play with a variety of wrapping paper if you don't like the front paint it this has a nice pearlized look to it don't like that at all paint on the back use it that way use them as junk pages junk paper for junk journals here's some pattern paper use it in collage use it for all kinds of things just to have something different tactilely in your journals pattern instructions come on super soft paper so you can use that in in a junk journal as well or in collage Another piece of deli paper. Manila folder. These make great covers for junk journals. They make great folios as well. Journal cards, tags. You can, there's just a lot, a lot of things you can do with a manila folder. Some images to play with. Glue them on here. Now you have a journal card. Just a variety of papers. This is from a 1930s book on photography. Vintage playing cards. These are from the 1970s, I believe. This is from a 1950s cookbook that was loved to death. The pages were falling out. Naturally aged, naturally old. These are fun, old-fashioned, carbonless carbon receipts. These coffee dye really well. Some QR codes because I just think they're fun. These are hang tags but they work just as well as tickets. Put strings through them and hang tag things. You can put little sentiments on it, make tiny little clusters. I've used these on the gel plate so you could fun spray them, paint them all up and then use them. You can mark, mark make on them for different things and add them. You can fold them in half and have them be tabs, page edging. Some ledger paper. It is not vintage. It is not even really old, uh, but it is pretty cool. Again, takes coffee dyeing really, really well. 
coffee dye it, tear it up, use it in collages on master boards. Some more mark making, different sized bubble wrap. This has big, the big bubbles versus the regular size. Book pages of all shapes and sizes. There are a million videos on how to use old book pages. And if you're new to junk journaling, you may not be ready to gut books yet. You may not have these, so you can't play the reindeer games of making all the things with book pages. But I got you covered again. Here are some of mine. I have boxes of them. I'm not gonna use them all ever. So you can use these as painty papers. You can use them to fold a bajillion different ways into different kinds of inserts for your journals. You can washi tape them together and make pages for your journal. A lot of people don't mind sideways pages. There are several of from one book. So if you fold them in half, now you have a journal. Staple it here and here, put a cover on it, staple it here and here. Now you've got a mini glue book. Take all of them and do that. You might have to poke holes and sew it because that's pretty pretty thick for the stapler, but then you would have a really nice chunky little glue book. Another napkin. Some of my digital kits that I have used and cut up and I, I just, I print them a lot, making them to make sure the print is the right size and things are spelled right, etc. And And I have a lot, so bits of those. Random papers from paper packs large print these are great fun for pulling out phrases or words like the constellation if you're doing a summer night sky journal or a celestial journal tear out that word and put it on top of a cluster or in a in a collage or whatever you can pull out phrases dates too many lawyers haha ha, fun you can use the the uh, images just for fun as well. Large print are always fun. Several dictionary pages, different sizes, different ages, different languages. This is from a 1950s book, Berlitz French for Travelers. Dictionary pages, pulling out just a, a dictionary entry is so much fun on a page or on a master board. I love seeing dictionary images here and there and using them these are still together minus the circle i don't know what what's up with that i don't know what happened there <laughs> but you could use those uh, as is in a junk journal and what what about the hole in the center you make a franken paper then you just glue something over it we do that all the time make franken papers out of smaller bits of paper and torn bits lots of videos on how to do franken paper this is from a 1970s German folk music book. Just fun. Not always fun to have a foreign language stuff in your junk journal adventures. Uh, a larger print dictionary. These are from 1930s ex encyclopedia. Just the nice old pages if you just want to use the old page or put this in a journal and, and collage over it if you don't like these crazy old-fashioned looking pictures use the pictures something if you're doing victorian something or other lots of different some of them have colored illustrations vintage pages pages from a 1970s no this was a 2017 almanac some vintage ads. Vin this is this is from the encyclopedia as well. Old but fairly old. Romeo and Juliet scene design book. Stage play maybe is a better word for what that is. Uh, these are from Vintage Reader's Digest book. I believe from the 50s. 1965 encyclopedia. 1960s book on grasses. So you, you get the point. Music, some colored, this is from a 1960s book on uh, the swan, the trumpet swan. Music paper, a 19, even though it's 1980s, look how wonderfully aged those are. Reader's Digest book on gardening, vintage pages, phone book, miscellaneous papers, some images, more wall excuse me wrapping paper lots of wrapping paper calendars these make great cut these out and fold them in half and they make great tabs 
and uh, fun little little places for mini collages and clusters or here's the picture isn't this cool this is a a halo for blind dogs so they don't run into things protects their little heads every one of these dogs is blind look isn't that cute you know there'd be dog stuff not much i don't give up much dog stuff but i had two of these calendars or three so i don't need them all fun little envelope more wallpaper a super super old newspaper more pages vintage construction paper a coffee dyed book page this is from a 1960s encyclopedia for handyman more calendar pages more wallpaper and i'm telling you i jammed as much as i could jam in here vintage cookbook and some nice heavy cardstock do painty papers on it whatever some 1960s magazine pages with these nice old ads right lipton these are from 1963 i believe this is a book told in poetry just some different pages to add to your stash that is that for the junk journal starter kit there is a truckload of stuff in each and every one to get you on your way so that you don't feel like you have to go buy a million things or you know can't start now because i don't have any napkins can't start now because i don't have any manila folders i don't have any vintage pictures this gets you well on your way there's more than enough here to fill one two three regular size nine by six journals easy easy way to do that so again think blank slate when you think junk journal starter kit there's stuff for you to build on this is the foundation pack junk journal starter kit next up is what i call either a stash starter kit or a stash refresher kit most people that i know have been doing this a while and so they don't need to build a stash they've already got a lot of stuff they're in the same boat i am however we can always use a refresher right so the stash starter kit and stash refresher kit one and the same depends on how you want to look at it also build to capacity this this uh, padded envelope these are things to help you fill up your junk journals and your master boards and 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 so again envelopes that you can use paint them up there's so many and i really like these with the different kind of windows you know most of the ones we get all look the same when i find different ones like this i i snag them up again some things that are from digital kits that i have printed multiples of some things that i have dyed coffee dyed or painted and then punched these are fun to add to papers if you know put it on a on a page they're just so cute looks like a herd of moose walking uh some painted leaves some coffee dyed index cards more ribbon tickets and everything in this pack is something that i have either made or seen a video on for example puzzle pieces are great fun to add to clusters or journal pages i use these i i spray painted a whole bunch of them brown they're just poker chips i took a an image on heavier paper like on manila folder or something glued it to that and then glued cut out the circle and put it inside this and in between this plastic and the paper I glued a piece of baker's twine so it ended up being a book a dangle on a book or um, something that hangs on the page a lot of different things that you could do with these you use your imagination and I have a whole bunch of them puzzle pieces um, these pull tabs in various colors uh, Eva at Bohemian Crafting makes makes closures with these she attaches them and they spin so that now now it holds something closed brilliant use of these tabs so i started collecting these i've got a truckload of those as well some things that i have made various 
versions of for my videos. This is just a something or other. No, it was $18.91. This is just copies of it, obviously. It's just something fun and some old cameras. Now, they won't all include this. They include different things that I've made. This this one happens to have this trifold. It could be a traveler's notebook. It could be something that you tuck in a journal. It, tear it up and use it as masterboard. Use the back as a masterboard backing. I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do with this. Tickets, of course. These don't bleach. Some of them will. These will not bleach, but you can paint these. You could spatter them. You can coffee dye them. Bits of ribbon. Um, pages, again, from different magazines. But these have a little more color this is again something to build use in your junk journals once you have something going some images from a flowers field kit images and not necessarily corresponding they don't go like cow parsnip is probably not here and Spanish moss is probably not here but these are fun to add in botanical journals gardening journals whatever gardening pages, floral pages. I like when I make clusters, like if I'm doing a, a gardening book and I do a cluster, I want the text behind all the goodies to be gardening related. It's just one more layer of cohesion to my brain. People might not even notice it, but I know it's there. These are from a 1940s book on Red Cross nursing. Some have illustrations, some have just interesting tidbits of information. Again, use them as painty papers, use them as is, tear them up, use them as collages, use the old pictures, the old fonts. This is a book from the 1940s uh, vocabulary book, elementary school vocabulary book. And this is what happens to scotch tape it does not age well it it goes through the paper it goes right through you can see the back so I, I would not recommend using scotch tape in your journals now but it sure is nice I know people do a lot to make this look well this is genuine this is this is officially aged and it's very especially where the tape was, the, the pages are very brittle, but you can use the, the images, you can use, you know, just sticking a part of this in a journal would be fun. Various greeting cards. Where's the glitter? This is filled with glitter. How come we can't see it? There it is. Just fun. Cut out little bits of clip art with glitter. Cut out the, the phrases, bright as a bluebird singing her happiest tune. Use it as is. I just love all the glitter. Some gel plate printing, miscellaneous stuff that I have done. This can either be colored in if you want to color it, leave it as is, tear it up and use it in collage. Black and white adds a lot to collage. Fold it in half, use it as a, a journal page. All kinds of uses there. Pages from a variety of my the bulk of the stash refresher kits comes from my collection of vintage books that I've been amassing over the last few years. Now, I don't have great vintage like 1800s. I only have the one 1800 magazine. I have not torn that up yet, but I do have lots from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. A lot of fun things like this book, English Big Business Use, was 53, I think. And I just love the photographs in it and some of the the things that they say you know because they're so dated so that's fun a little bit of learning is a dangerous thing fun little clip art fun quotes i love using good quotes in my journals and in my digital kits you every digital kit i have almost has quotes in it this is from a 1950s instruction manual for the oven that was in my house when i bought it 1950s notebook paper and this was a divider between the notebook paper beautifully aged isn't that just wonderful i just think that's so beautiful some 1950s handwritten recipes you know natural aging you know natural it's been in the kitchen a while some autobahn pictures more uh, from field guides some interesting pictures that I have collected and decided I probably won't use. Dictionary pages, various ages, 
from Bright White. This one is German. Some more large print paper. This is from, oh, I'm, Jane Bainey sent me this wonderful book from the 19, it's from 1928, and it's called The Book of Happiness. And it, there's all kinds of happiness quotes and whatnot, and I, I didn't know what to do with it, so I kept a few pages for myself, and I'm putting the rest in these stash refresher kits to share. I love it. Some tags that I have made. These are so easy to make. This is made from German folk music. Another one of those pockets. I told you I made a lot of them. Pages from 1970s, might even be 60s, late 60s, early 70s, children's book. This is that German folk music book. 1950s book on shorthand. Again, naturally aged, beautifully aged. This is from a 1965 book, Walt Disney book collection of Walt's stories. The book is called Walt Disney Fantasy Land, and it was falling apart when I bought it. I used the cover. I will show you that in another video, either just recently or soon. That shows you how I used the cover. I kept the story with Maleficent in it, of course, but I'm sharing the rest. These are from some vintage ideals books. So either the black and white, not really black and white, it's kind of like a green sepia looking. Use the poems, use the vintage pictures, cut them out, fold them in half. Again, if, if you don't mind sideways pages, you're all set. Again, from an ideals book, some of my own sketches, various book pages. 1950s cookbook we've already covered because that's in the uh, junk journal starter kit as well some pages from a 1960s or 70s stamp book if you don't have stamps cut them out cut them out interesting images fun clip art i have a book called do one thing every day that makes you happy and i have torn that apart and i'm sharing bits and pieces of that a vintage receipt some vintage receipt papers. This had the carbon in it. You had to actually have a piece of carbon paper to make this work. Planning your meals. This is all. This is a 1950s book on how to set your table and plan your meals for the homemaker. This is from a late 1800s, early 1900s book. I bought it for the cover. Again, it was falling apart. And so I'm sharing some of the pages. 1930s book on, I think it's 30s, 40s book on music. And I like this because it has tiny little music. If you're doing clusters or a small journal, you don't necessarily want the full size music sheets. These little tiny pieces of music are great for smaller projects. Annabelle's Treasury of Literary Teasers, just fun names and stuff, but I really like the illustrations. Numbers, Penny Papers, this is a book I believe my friend Donna, shout out Donna, haven't heard from you in a while, miss ya. Uh, she sent me a book about um, this guy who uses found papers and writes his poetry with his old typewriter on it. And really a great book, but it's just been sitting there, sitting there on my shelf and I didn't know what quite what to do with it. So I decided to tear it up and use it for pages for myself and for these starter kits. This is from a 2014 Farmer's Almanac. Great illustrations. I love these tables and whatnot. Marguerite Miller style collage. She uses a lot of tables and formulas and figures. And Old bottle collector's book. Great images. Some colored. Fussy cut them. Use the letters for ransom letters. Again, cut out the tables for collages and masterboards. This was a wonderful book on artist trading cards. Again, I believe Donna sent me that and it's just exquisite, but it started to fall apart. The pages all started coming out. And so now I've been using these little images as part of my own collages or as inspiration. Wouldn't these be great little tags? Put them on, glue them on the manila folder for heft glue this on put a little hole through and dangle them from someplace love it a lot a lot of 
This is an altered playing card type. Just a lot of different ideas if you want to make artist trading cards. You can use the words, use the pictures, tear it up for collage, a lot of uses. This is from a 19, excuse me, a reprint of an 1880s Parapoint Manufacturing Company. It's a reprint, but even that is old. It's from the 80s, I think. It's just exquisite illustrations, detailed, beautiful illustrations. If you're doing a cooking journal or a food journal or, you know, we all eat any kind of, I think spoons are just fun. Some clip art dates, some large print if you want to steal some words. A little learning is a dangerous thing. Great illustration, great ransom letters. Some handwriting. I, I love collecting people's handwriting. More quotes. This is another piece from the 1880 reprint of the 1880s. But again, the the pictures are so detailed. This is engraved and gold lined for a whopping seventeen dollars. <laughs> and they're all different, you know, because they sold a lot of stuff. I was amazed how much stuff they sold. This is from a 1980s book, I think it was a 1980s book, of stories told in family photographs. And I just thought the old black and white were so fun. Some of them kind of creepy. Because, you know, when there was film, a lot of times you'd get double exposure or, or lens flare or who knows. She just looks like she's sort of floating there. Her, her dress and legs disappear into the back. A lot of fun old pictures in that. These are from a 1970s, I think it was like Women's Day or something like that, but it was specifically for plants and flowers. Vintage Ideals, 1950s typewriter book. How fun is that? typewriter textbook. Some fun black and white images. A lot of people are into, still into the farm stuff, doing farm journals and whatnot, country journals. There you go. Different sheet music. These are from the 1970s, I think. Oh no, this is from the 1990s. It's a textbook about music, the design, math and design of music, I think. Just fun. This one is from the 1970s, and a lot of them have either photographs or illustrations. So not only do you get the music, which is so fun to use in journals, but you get some kind of clip art as well. Stuff, there you go. Again, more of my own digital kit stuff, different tickets. Uh, I found these at St. Vinny's, a whole bunch of them. You can use it as a template and make some of your own. You can just ja jazz it up and stick it in your own journals. Some painty papers, some of my favorite painty papers with my uh, Asian inspired lettering. I don't know what to call it. Painty paper. If you don't like it, paint over it. Paint on the other side. See, I use everything. Everything is is fair game. Paint this side, fold it in half, and you have an interesting junk journal page. Tear this up, put a put a collage or a master board over it, tear it up. An old coloring book, I can't tell you how long I've had this, that I did color a long, long time ago. Peacock colors. Oh, just some miscellaneous little cutouts and pieces that I liked from magazines that I think you would have fun with. Again, it's just to s refresh your stash or have a stash to start with. I made this a long time ago from, I'm not, I don't even know what it is, maybe manila folder leftovers and some wrapping paper. I love it. This is one of my sandwich papers I made, copy paper, and then there's something in between, I don't know what, and then tissue napkin paper over it stamped. This makes great tabs for page edging. It makes fun little miniature journal covers. All kinds of things to use that for. I think this was from Donna too. I feel bad I'm, I'm sharing a, a lot of that Donna sent me, but I haven't used it and it, there's no sense in it sitting here 
wasting away in my room if someone can get some use out of it. And if you don't like the stuff on the front, cutting out bits and pieces of it would look great in a masterboard or collage. If you're doing an instrument, a music journal, just take pieces of it and then save the old paper for other things. This is from a very old magazine, 1920s I think it was, old magazine uh, selling lace. You could get Swiss Robin Galoon lace for 12 cents a yard. Yeah, it's old. <laughs> Coffee dyed paper doily. Some of my favorite bits of... of uh, I made a whole bunch of scraps one time just to make scraps. Sounds silly, but I did. So a lot of little things. Part of that 1950s French burlitz. I made a bicycle stamp out of fun foam. And I was stamping it on everything to see how it worked. Some painty papers, some stamped things, some junk mail, stuff that I've stamped and torn up, pieces of different notebook, and interesting images that I have found but not used. This is a photo paper. No, it is not. It's, it's sticker paper. So if you have any fun punches, you could punch this out, punch out fun shapes. It is a circle punch. There we go. It's a it's a CD thing, but you can cut pieces out of it for and make stickers uh, matching. I tried to coordinate colors wherever I could, so you'll see that hopefully th things go together for you. Birthday cards, miscellaneous tickets, my my Wabi Sabi coffee paper. I made a whole bunch. I don't need it all. This looks like wrinkled paper, but it's just a print. I love that. I think that's fun. Some pages just to use as pages. Coffee dye the back. This is printed on my non-laser printer, so if you get it if you get it wet, the stuff will all bleed. That might be really cool. You can also run it through the printer and print on this side one of your favorite digi kits. I have coffee dyed paper on my my Etsy store in all different colors. Coffee, Irish coffee, blue co iced coffee purple coffee, pink coffee, whatever you want. You can print it on the back so that both sides are pretty. This is a pe uh, from a 1950s chemistry book, maybe 1960s. The pages are nice and caramely on the edges. But what I picked these up for is, again, for the Marguerite Miller type collages. These are those tickets painted up. I, I used them on the on the gel plate this is just a print of them but that's what they look like when they're when they're painted up you can use this as is fold it like tickets cut them up and use them each put a hole through the hole and use them as a hang tag more vintage papers these are perforated they're different this is a card and these are like business card style i would use these for painty papers the backs are are perfectly plain use them for painting papers and then and then pull out the cards and see what you end up with personal creations cut those out use that use the words and the numbers those look great in master boards if you don't have rubber stamps start collecting numbers and glue them in just as fun here's that bicycle again on fabric some stamped fabric tea tags these are great fun these make great pockets Paint these, collage on these, use them as they are. Some of them have like little fortunes. Tea first, everything else after. Tea proudly. I guess they all say the same thing, but you can paint these up. You can use them as is. Fun little additions. Pattern instructions, a little bit heavier paper from a book, the paint box, also from Donna. Thank you. Some cards, heavy duty cards. These are from 1979. More dictionary pages, more old fashioned images. I've been using my covers to make soft covered journals, or you can cut this, these vintage images out. This is 1966. This has been around. You can use just the old images. Lots of uses for this. I, hate to t I would hate to tear it apart because I love all the the natural aging of it more book pages use as is tuck it in this is you could write over this really easily use this whole thing as a journaling card more digital kits 
some pictures of some of my vintage sewing items, some avocado dyed, some miscellaneous. There we go. That is the stash refresher kit. As much as I can cram into that envelope. And I'm still, I, I'm still adding to them. I've not listed them anywhere except on my Patreon page. And so I'm still adding to them because I'm still purging my room. Last but not least, glue book goodie bags. Now, you can get free free magazines for glue books anywhere, but if you're just starting out and you're really interested in glue booking, we usually hang around with people who are like us, and so we, we may all subscribe to the same kind of magazines in our friends and family. But these have been collected from my friends, friends and family. So outside of my own circle. Mm. And they've also come from my library and in various places. People know now to bring me magazines. And so I have magazines coming out my ears. And so what I'm doing for the glue book goodie bags is, of course, just a, a variety of magazines. Here we've got Rolling Stone, Woman's World, Shape, a book page magazine. That's a calendar page. HGTV. I have no idea. What is this one? This one is Centennial Home. Cuddle Down Mac catalogs because they have so many beautiful patterns and some really fun pictures. AARP. You'd be surprised what you can find in there. This one's Sports Illustrated. The Money Issue. Car and Driver. Now. These are not brand new magazines. They're from a wide variety of years. This is from 2019, 2015. I don't know. This one's pretty current, 2023 perhaps. So they're from a variety of years and are in various stages of harvesting. They may have been lightly harvested. A lot of times my friends will give them to me and say, I took a few articles that I wanted to save out or I cut out the recipes that I liked. Here's the magazine. So either I or someone else has maybe been through them. There are precious few that are brand, brand new. Catalog will likely be new because I get them all the time. I have 18 of those dogs. I don't need another one. Uh, so I, I probably didn't go through all the cuddle dud ones, but what I like these for is the patterns to just cut little squares out. Uh, fun, fun things to do with just squares or just rank rectangles. And you saw that there's a dog in there. I love that. Beautiful patterns. So much fun to play with. So pretty. Cut a square out of that or as many little squares as you can and, and do a master board. Lots of fun things to do with catalogs. So uh, in addition to catalogs, excuse me, in addition to magazines, I've also gone through, as I'm going through my room, and sharing things that I've harvested but probably won't be using. So just random images that you might not even notice, but you'll go, oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Or... I would never think of those colors. I like that. If you don't like them, tear them up and throw them away. If you don't like them, pass them on to somebody else. If you don't like it, paint over it. If you don't like it, color it in and make it something fun. Give them all party hats. You don't have to use the things I send. But I, what I wanted to do with this, for example, I wrote on here, ransom letters, words, and phrases. There might not be a whole lot of really cool, unless you're a football buff, and many are, but there might not be a whole lot of really cool pictures for your junk journals, but there's fabulous long words and there's great patterns for other projects. That would be great. Just, you know, leave him out of it for your colors glue book, ransom letters, words and phrases. If you're doing a health journal, cut her out. Faces in the crowd. That'd be a fun phrase you know so there's there's other ways to use it other than just taking the meh images that you know the binoculars would be fun put different things in you know cut out <laughs> this is great cut out the uh, blinds and put different images in the binoculars and there's all kinds of ways beastlies to use magazines other than the traditional way. And different size magazines. These little guys 
have wonderful pictures in it and it's so nice to get See, I, I did tear something out, or somebody tore something out. It's so nice to get something different. Isn't this fun? Just an empty snow globe. Put something in there. Use the quotes. More ransom letters. Just use the words, the best. There are fun pictures. Fun patterns. So you, you just never know. And again, I'm sticking as many as I can into the, into the envelope. So... Every one of them, no matter which kind, junk journal starter kit, stash startup or stash refresher kit, or glue book goodie bag, they're all $15 a piece, plus the $11 to ship them. So that's not bad to get a nice head start or to get a nice refresher for your stash. Right now, they're not on Etsy. I like to give YouTube viewers first dibs, and it's quite frankly cheaper if you if we do it via YouTube. If you want one or two of these, however many you want, just email me at mytakeatthelake at gmail.com. I'll put it in the link below, and we can do it through PayPal. You don't have to have a PayPal account to pay through PayPal, but what I'll do through my PayPal account is just send you an invoice that will cover shipping and handling and the cost of the goodies. And then you can pay any way you want, however you want to pay PayPal and PayPal will take care of it. But you don't have an account at PayPal. You can just pay it however you normally pay for anything else. But that's easier and it's cheaper. Once these go on Etsy, the price is going to go up because Etsy takes a big chunk out of every, every sale getting bigger all the time so if i can avoid etsy i'd ra I'd, I'd rather do that and it's just easier so email me it would help too if you aren't if you don't mind to in the to comments hey yeah i'd like one check your email so that i know to check my email because i'm not really good at that either but i do my best especially now that i'm trying to do some sales over over email this was a long one. I appreciate your time. I hope that you find some inspiration here and that you're interested in these. I'm going to call it my fire liquidation sale because if they don't go, I'm going to have one big bonfire <laughs> this summer. So, so there's that. We could look forward to that video. In the meantime, you have a wonderful crafty day. Go love up your beastlies. Take them outside now that it's getting nice. Spend some time outside with them. They would love that. Make sure they've got their shots, though, because other dogs don't. My ticket at the lake. Out for now.